What's going on guys? It's James back with another MX-5 update and in this episode, finally, I'm going to start throwing some parts at this car in preparation for some boost. So with boost comes heat. The science of compressing air generates heat. So when I slap a supercharger on this car, this engine is gonna be subjected to a lot more heat than in naturally aspirated form. So I've gotta make sure the cooling system in this thing is in tip top condition. Now, if you've been following this series for a while, you'll remember I replaced the water pump and the thermostat last year when I did the timing belt job. So I'm not too concerned about those two items. What does concern me though, is the stock radiator in this car, which may or may not be up to the job. The truth is, I'm not sure, but am I gonna risk potentially overheating the engine and damaging it because I couldn't be bothered to swap this part out? As it turns out, no, which is why I've bought this. It's a second-hand aluminium radiator with dual fan setup. And as you can see, this is a lot thicker and beefier than the stock radiator, giving it much more cooling capability. So this should be a really good bolt-in upgrade. Now, this little setup here cost me £110, but I already included that in the budget way back in episode three of this series. So the current spend still stands at £985 and I think eight pence, something like that. Right, before I can remove the stock radiator, I need to drain the coolant. So right in the middle, at the bottom of this radiator is the drain plug. So I'm gonna whip that out, remove the radiator cap, and then just let this system drain down for a few minutes. Right, most of the coolant has drained out of this radiator, so now I can begin removing the hoses. There's three on this radiator, one at the top here, this expansion tank hose, the upper radiator hose, and the lower radiator hose. So I'll start up here, the expansion tank hose on the filler neck, you can just pull that off. Might need a bit of persuasion. There we go. Upper radiator hose, just squeeze this clamp with some pliers, slide it down the hose, let go, and twist this thing off. Right, that's taken care of. The last one is the lower radiator hose, and I think, yeah, I put a Jubilee clip on that when I did the timing belt job, so I just need to slacken off that Jubilee clip and then pull that lower hose. Okay, that's the hoses taken care of. The next thing I need to do is unplug the fan. So just squeeze that and pull. There we go. Oh, and then the harness needs unclipping from the fan shroud. Some long nose pliers. There we go. Put that to one side for now. Right, this radiator is almost out of here because the last thing I need to remove are these two brackets at the top here. Now these are held in place by a couple of 14 millimeter nuts. So I'll back those off, remove the brackets, and then this radiator should just lift out of here. There she goes. Okay, that's the stock radiator removed. The uh, aluminium replacement should just drop straight in place of the old one. But before I do it, I need to make sure I've swapped the bushings over from the old radiator to this aluminium radiator. And then once I've done that, I can just drop it straight in this hole. Right, we've got the bushings in place, two on the top, two on the bottom. Let's get this thing in. Locate it in the lower supports. Like so. Now to secure this in place, I just need to reinstall these two brackets at the top. Great, that is securely fastened in there. So now I just need to get the hoses back on. So expansion tank hose, upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose. All 
Alright, so far so good. Everything up to now has been pretty straightforward because it's all been like for like bolt up stuff. But this is where things get slightly more complicated because the next thing I need to do is wire in these dual fans. Now to keep everything as simple as possible, I've actually chosen to wire these fans in parallel and have them activated by the same switch. If this was a car with air conditioning, I'd have a few more options because those cars had a second fan and all the associated circuitry that goes with it, relay, etc. This car doesn't, so I'm a little bit limited. The only downside of doing it this way is potentially overloading the circuit, running two fans on the circuit which was only designed to run one, but fingers crossed it'll cope. So to do this I basically need to cut the stock connector off the loom and then crimp the wires from the fans directly to that, making sure I get them the right way round. And then once they're all connected up I'll test the fans later when we start the car. I'll go into Mighty, into the tuning software and test them. Right, we've got the radiator all buttoned up and the fans are wired in and I've also moved the car out of the garage because shortly I need to start the engine. And one thing I have learned about having a garage directly under your house is that if you start the car and run it for a while in there, your house stinks of exhaust fumes. And it also sets off the carbon monoxide sensor as well. So that's why I've brought it outside. Next up, I need to refill this cooling system. I'm gonna reuse the coolant that I removed because it's still pretty fresh, but if you've removed all stuff I'd always recommend replacing it with fresh coolant. Alright so the heat controls in the car are set all the way to hot and I've also jacked up the front of the car as well to help me with this bleeding process. So I'm going to fill up the radiator with the coolant. I'll give the lower radiator hose a good squeeze every now and again just to try and get as much air out of this system as possible. Right, I've got as much coolant as I can possibly get in this radiator, so now I'm going to start the car, run it up to temperature, keep an eye on this level here and top it up if necessary. Right, the car's getting up to temp now. You can see how the coolant is steaming a little bit. That means the thermostat has opened and the coolant is circulating through this radiator. Right, that engine's been running for a while now. It's fully up to temperature. The thermostat's opened and it's been circulating coolant through this radiator. And I'm pretty satisfied now that all the air is out of this system. So the next thing I need to do is bung the radiator cap back on. Now this radiator actually came with quite a sporty radiator cap. It looks a lot nicer than the stock one. And it also has this fancy push button on it. So you can release the pressure from the radiator without having to remove the cap itself and potentially without burning your face off as well. So that's always a nice feature so I'm going to bung that on there I'm going to top the expansion tank up just a little bit it doesn't need much and then we should be fully bled and good to go and the last thing I need to do is test these fans Right, to test these fans, I've gone into Mighty and I'm over on the AC fan and alternator tab and I'm looking at the fan settings right here. So you can see just down in this box, the on temp for the primary fan is currently set at 93 degrees. And if I look at the current coolant temperature, it's more like 82. So I just need to drop this below the current temperature. So I'll change it to 80, click enter. And there we go. I can hear the fans have come on from in here. So I'm just gonna go to the engine bay and check they are working correctly. Right, so as you can see and hear, these fans are definitely running. And the good news is, they are sucking air through the radiator, not blowing it. If they were blowing it, I'd have wired it in the wrong way around. But that's good, they're both working. Let's turn them off. Right, they're working fine, so now I'm back in Mighty. I'm just going to change this on temp uh, for the primary fans back to 93. Click enter, job done. 
So there we go, that's another episode in the books and another step towards supercharging this car. Now I guess this episode was more preventative maintenance than anything else, but after doing this mod, I do feel a lot better about this cooling system's ability to deal with the heat extra heat generated by a supercharged engine. So if you enjoyed the episode, please do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you want to stay up to date with this build, subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next episode.